Hey everyone, so today I want to talk to you about how I'm using my Hobonichi Cousin. And I know I showed you in I think the previous video or the video before that, that I was using this as a memory planner. And I was, let's see, I'll show you here. But I decided to move back into my, the Angel Shop planner that's kind of like the size of a Hobonichi Weeks. I decided to move my memory planning back in there and I'll save that explanation for an upcoming video and show you how I'm doing that. But the main reason I did that is because I just found that this weekly layout wasn't working well for me for memory planning. And like I said, I'll explain that more later. So I switched this back to what I was using it for before I turned it into a memory planner. Oh my gosh. They, I think I saw a joke around social media, like Instagram, the quickest way to jinx what you use a planner for is to share it on social media because a lot of times I end up and a lot of people end up changing it up right after they shared it. That's where I'm at right now. But anyways, even if I change it up again, there are some ideas in here for wellness tracking that you can use in any planner. So I wanted to share that with you. So first of all, I usually have a cover on here. It's this cover, but it has a glare, so I took it off. And plus, I wanted to show you what planner I was using. So this planner has like a yearly overview, monthly, weekly, and daily. So I'm going to show you. You can see there's four tabs here. I'm going to show you some wellness tracking ideas for each of those sections. So this first tab is in the yearly section. And it's actually blank, but now that I'm back in here, I'll transfer the information back here. But what I do here is I track my health stats. So if you see here, it has January through June and then June through December. So you can see like all the year at a glance. And I like doing that for my health stats so I can see, you know, how I've progressed over the months. So what I track here on a daily basis is my weight my fasting blood glucose level and my blood pressure. So every single morning I write all three of those stats on one line. So yeah, like I said, that's just a great way to, if you're tracking anything where you want an overview of the whole year so you can see your progression or you know, you're keeping track of some kind of health thing. That's how I use this section. And then in the monthly section, I use it as um, a meal planner, but just for dinners. So what I do is these sticky notes, I keep all these sticky notes on the side and I have a couple of blank ones to add more. And these are dinner ideas or our favorite dinners like Panda Express and stuff like that. So I keep it here. And then like for instance, for instance, today's the 14th, so this is this week. These are my dinner ideas for this week. And usually we like to have one dinner last two nights because that's less thinking and preparing on our part. So here I have a few dinner ideas, this last two days, this last two days, this last two days, and then we usually have one of the days, either Friday, Saturday, and Sunday um, for pickup. And so, that's when I'm kind of like brainstorming ideas and I put it on sticky notes because a lot of times, more often than not, these ideas are moving around. And then when we actually do have that dinner, that's when I write it in. I forgot what we had dinner for these two nights, but I try to track it because number one, as I'm tracking how different things affect my health stats, I'll make a note of it here. And I didn't do that here because like I said, I just moved back into this planner as a wellness planner, but that's what I would mark here. And then also, because if we have, you know, chicken katsu, if we just had it, I can look here. Oh, we just had that last week. Let's not have it this week and stuff like that. So it just helps with planning by logging all our dinners here and also tracking how it affects my health stats. So that's how I use the monthly. And then the weekly, I'm using this as like a mood tracker. So every day I'm tracking how many hours of sleep I get and then three other things which I feel really can affect my mood. So if I take like time in the morning to read and journal, um, in the afternoons around lunchtime, my husband and I like to go for a walk. 
and then dinner time is always like dedicated family time. My girls are a little bit older, 13 and 9, so they like to do a lot of things on their own. Dinner time is always family time, so we say no devices and making sure we're like connecting. So I like to mark if we're doing those things because that can affect my mood. And then down here is um, like a line graph. I wish I had a finished one to show you guys, but basically um, I track these moods here. So it goes from high energy to neutral, to low energy, grumpy, and anxious. For me, anxious is like the lowest. And so each day, I'll just put a little dot on where I fall, and like here and here and here, and then I'll connect the dots. So at the end of the week, I'll see how my mood swings have been for that week. You know, sometimes you'll see a lot of up and down, up and down. And what I like to do is if I see a day that's really down, then I'll look, how much sleep did I get? Did I take time for myself to read or journal or whatever? Did I get any you know, activity and movement. And then did I spend time with family? And then another thing I like to do is in these in-between times, if there's anything significant that happened to me during that day that can affect my mood, like I had a fight with my daughters or it was a really busy day with the shop or something like that, I like to mark it here because then I can see, oh, I had a low day because it was so busy at work and I was stressed out or something like that. And the way I like to mark that, I bought some stickers from Once More With Love and Coffee Monsters Co. And this is what I would like to use just because, you know what I figured? Like in text messaging, on social media, I love using emojis to quickly express, you know, whatever emotion I'm feeling. So I'm like, you know what? That would be great to have some of these so I can know, oh, if I had a bad day or if my mood was low, I could kind of see at a glance why that would be. So I love using these. I'll link their shops down below. And then lastly, on the side column, I like to put a little sticker just for fun, just for decorative purposes. But then I put a little label here to indicate anything that's happening this week that can affect my mood. So this week is sub week where we're doing a lot of packing, it's super busy. So that could also affect my mood as far as being tired, overwhelmed or something like that. So I just like to mark that here. So at the end of the week when I'm reviewing how my mood has been throughout the week, I can see all the contributing factors. So I really, really like how I set this up just because it tells me so much about my moods because I tend to be a pretty moody person and this will give me explanations why and then also help me to fix it, like get more sleep, have more downtime, have more movement and stuff like that. So that's that and then lastly is my journaling pages. So this is like the daily pages, just one page per day blank and what I use this for is just unloading in the morning. Um, it's actually the first thing I do after I like wash up, brush my teeth and all that. I sit down with a cup of coffee and I journal one page and I just kind of unload anything that's kind of bothering me for the day so I can unload it and then start the day fresh. And then after I do this, I go into reading and then I work. So this has been really helpful for me to just kind of unload anything that's on my mind and then writing it out helps me process it. And then also I think writing it out and processing it helps me kind of subconsciously process it throughout the day so I can maybe work it out subconsciously and work towards like a solution or a uh, revelation or something like that. So yeah, that's how I use my Hobonichi Cousin as a wellness tracker. But like I said, you can take any of these ideas and implement them in your own planners, ring bound planners, Hobonichi Weeks, bullet journal, anything like that. For me, I think these things are super important to track, especially for someone like me who deals with some anxiety, some health, 
you know, issues. It's really helpful for me to track these things so I can work on improving it little by little. And I really like keeping it in a separate planner rather than my everyday planner, which is my ring bound planner. Because they're all together, I can look back and see my progression throughout the months and weeks and days. So I really like having it all together like this rather than in my ring bound planner which I tend to toss the insert. So it's like a keepsake that I can keep going forward to look back on. So yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions down below and thank you so much for watching. Bye.